How you doing, everybody? Uh, long time no see, long time no hear. Um, I'm coming to you with a live video today. Um, right now, to this day, um, I just want to put my love and condolences out there um, to mention my mom and rest in peace and I believe that she's with Christ Jesus of Nazareth in heaven. Um, I just want to take this time right now um, for a moment of prayer and um, to give you this uh, message that's been put on my heart for a uh, time is short for everybody, I believe. And, um, we don't know when our day is or when the timing of Christ's return is going to be. You know, Scripture does say uh, nobody knows the day nor hour of his return, Christ's return. Um, only the Father. Uh, so we have to be prepared. we got to be ready to meet the Lord, whether it be in the air um, or when we go home. We don't know when that time is, when even our day may be up. So let's say a quick prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we come to you a prayer in the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, we want to thank you for this day. Thank you for the loved ones we have and our friends and those who are put in our life to build us up when we feel down, to encourage us when we feel discouraged, and to keep us along the path uh, that you have uh, destined us for. I ask that you uh, strengthen my family and... Uh, Please uh, comfort my mom in your love and with, in your hand. Uh, comfort us and those who are grieving and uh, give us a peace about the whole situation and uh, let the love that we have we have from my mom resonate now with those who are around us, those who we need to reconcile with, and ultimately, Lord, to you. I'm asking you, Father, that the presence of you be made shown manifested in our lives more than ever for we don't know when our dying day is, but Lord, we all have to um, give an account on that day um, of what we did with our lives for if we chose to spread the gospel. Um, if we chose to tell somebody else about your love and put out, put down our own uncomfortable feelings or um, worrying about what others may think of us. And uh, I pray that you keep all of us safe, our eyes to be open, our hearts to be open. You're knocking at the door of our hearts that we all may receive you, Jesus Christ, the Savior and Lord, as, as the Messiah. Uh, we see that you are the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to God but only through you. Um, and I ask that uh, personally, Father, you help me with this message. That those who hear may consider where they're going when they pass, whom they follow right now, and the truth that sets man free, and that truth only is in you, Christ. So I'm thanking you now, and we all, and I keep everybody in my family and friends, I lift them up in prayer to strengthen them, Father, and um, to draw closer to you. In Jesus Christ's name and Nazareth, amen. So, again, I want to bring this message to you because it's the most important message. There's no other message that I can give to you than this of um, the gospel message of Christ. Um, there's there's 44 books in this Bible, I believe, and they all talk about one individual, Christ Jesus of Nazareth. Every book of the Bible is concluded and is summed up and the story is to show Jesus Christ, his life, his birth, his resurrection, and how he is the only way, truth, and life. And no one can come to God but only through him. All the way from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelations. But I have right here about ten or so verses uh from the book of Mark all the way to the book of Acts, how Christ is showing and telling us that he is the only way to God, that he is the Messiah, that he is God. 
There's no other name given under heaven in which you and I can be saved, but only to believe in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, which is a Hebrew, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So let's start um, in why I'm doing this, and which is the number one importance is in the book of Mark. If you have your Bible, if you have a Bible, if you have your phone, you can look it up. The, um, the Gospel of Mark. If you look, uh, just turn to like the middle of your Bible, you can look in the beginning of it. And it will show you all the, the titles of the books in the Old Testament and New Testament. Um, and this is in the Gospel of Mark. This was one of Christ's disciples. Um, that is an account of when Jesus was with them. This is a the gospel, the good net, the good news, according to the disciple Mark. So, if we turn to to Mark chapter sixteen, verse. Six, uh, 15. This is the reason why I'm telling you this message. Jesus, God tells us to tell you this. And Jesus, verse 15 of Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And Jesus said to them, his disciples, and even everybody, go into all of the world and proclaim to tell the gospel, the good news. To all of creation. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he who does not believe shall be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe in my name, Christ said. They will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. Verse 18 They will pick up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall not by no means harm them. They will they will lay hands on the sick and they shall be well. Christ is telling us to tell you. Go tell of him. Go tell of what he did. Tell him. Tell the people out there that are hungry for truth, that are thirsty for righteousness, that want to know, God, who are you? What is the right path? What religion do I do I turn to? Is there more than one way to you, God? Can all religions come to you? Well, first of all, to believe in Christ and Christianity, I personally don't believe it's a religion. Religion is man's way of earning his way into the kingdom of heaven. Christianity is a relationship with God through Christ Jesus, which is God, the intercessor, who has done it for us, the free gift of salvation, that we couldn't have done anything on our own to earn that way. Because Jesus says he has done it for us. And he only asks of us is us to believe in him, put our faith in him. So this is why I'm telling you this message, because you don't know, I don't know when our time's up. And we're all going to have to give an account. So the best thing I can do for you is to tell you the truth. So let's look at the Gospel of John, chapter 14. So, Christ says, beginning verse 1, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Also believe in me. In my Father's house are many abodes. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm coming again. And will receive you to myself. So that where I am, you will also be. And where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? I believe that's a lot. Well, a lot of people are have the same question today. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And hence, therefore, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it and will be sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been not, have I been so long a time with you and you have not known me, Philip? I've been with you a while. He who has seen me has seen the father. How is it that you say, show us the father? Believe me that I am in the father and the father is in me. But if not, but if you do not believe me because of the, of, of but if not believe because of the works in themselves. Christ raising the dead, Christ healing the blind, the leprosy, the sick, walking on water, all these things that man can't do, but only God can do. Forgiven sins. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works which I do, he shall do also, and greater than these he shall do, because I am going to the Father. And he also, in, in, in essence, is saying to those who believe in him, you're going to tell others about me as I've come from the father. Christ is saying to tell you talk about the disciples about me. Now you, I will send you to go tell others about me. And that's what's going on right now. Even 2000 years after the fact that when he went to the cross, died and now is resurrected, it's still happening. It's still being told. So let's, Look at right here. Uh first Timothy Timothy two five. That's that's like um towards the back of the Bible. So I believe this is Apostle Paul. For there is one God and one mediator. Of God and man, that man Christ Jesus. And if you look at the cross with Christ on it, it's between heaven and earth. He's posted up, crucified. Mediator, being the one whom we can go to to be saved, in which we can believe on because we can't save ourselves. Let's go to John 3.16, and this is the most um Commonly known Bible verse in the whole Bible, the most famous one. John, uh, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, who is Jewish. And uh, Nicodemus is asking these things about eternal life. And he says to Nicodemus, let's start as. Verse 14, for John 3, verse 14. And as, as Moses was lifted up in the wilderness, uh, up this, uh, well, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness and the Jews had to, uh, to look at the serpent and they wouldn't die, um, in the wilderness. So, so must the son of man be lifted up that everyone who believes unto Christ may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but would have eternal life. Verse 17, for God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes into, onto him is not condemned, but he who does not believe onto Christ is condemned already, because he has not believed into the name of the only begotten son of God. So right now, as Christ has given the grace for everybody even who, who is hearing this message, us not deserving it, you're hearing that Christ is God. He is the way to God the Father, that you're hearing his message to believe unto him, to believe right now, to believe today. And if you don't believe him, you'll be condemned because Christ is the only way to be saved. The only way, the truth, the only truth in this world and the only life that was given to us as a sacrifice so that we may be with God when we pass.
So let's look at John chapter 10, verse 9. Jesus says, I am the door. Now, the I am statements is very known in the Bible in the Old Testament. If you look at Moses, um, he says, who do I tell them, the, the people, who do I tell the Pharaoh sent me? The burning bush says, tell them that I am sent you. I am who I am. So when Jesus was saying all these things, they thought that he was blaspheming God by saying the I am statements. But if Christ is who he is, he's God. He's not lying. He is saying that I am. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved and shall go in and and shall go in and out and shall find pastor. And I want to read verse 10 as well. And the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what the devil and the enemy and the demons and those who are against Christ and you and I want. They want your eternal life to be stolen. They want to kill and destroy. And I apply the blood of Jesus Christ and that upon me, everybody right around me, and in the, every room of this house, in, in Jesus Christ's name, Nazareth. Um, but Jesus says he has come um, so that you may have eternal life and have it abundantly. So let's look at um, Romans chapter 10, verse 9. Towards the end of the Bible. Sorry, give me one second, guys. Gals. All right, where's Romans? Hmm. One second. Let me look up in the beginning. Romans 5.99. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. But if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised them from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart there is believing unto righteousness, and with the mouth there is confession unto salvation. For the scripture's sake, everyone who believes on him shall not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, and rich to all who call upon him. Forever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And we live in a world right now. Well, who is the Lord? Who is Lord? Whose name do we call on? Do we believe in? Christ Jesus of Nazareth. You believe unto his name. That's what I'm trying to convey to you. It's his name we believe on. He is the only name. Every other name is a lie. You're hearing truth. Let's go to um, John chapter 3, verse 36. He who believes on the Son has eternal life, but he who disobeys the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God shall, be abide, shall abide on him. You know what is dis, uh, disobeying God, uh, the Son? Is not believing that he is the way, the truth, and the life. By, is by not believing the words that he has told us, that spoke to us, by believing unto his name. And the wrath of God will abide on you if you do not believe on Christ as well. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Bear with me. Thank you. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God 
is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It's a gift. It's not by our works that we shall boast, God forbid, saying, oh, we saved ourselves, but it's the gift of God. It's eternal life. It's a gift. Let's look at 1 John 5.20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we might know him who is true. And we are in him and who is true. And in his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. It's the saying that he has given us the Bible so that we may understand. He has come into the world so that we may believe unto him. God came for you and I and came into the form and into the flesh of Christ Jesus. He has did everything for us that we can't do ourselves. So that we may know him, that we may know the way, the truth of life, that we may know whom and which to believe and which way to believe and how to believe. He has not given us anything else besides his truth and love. And we don't deserve that. We all have sinned against God and gone astray. Not one of us good. Not, not, not one. So let's look at John verse 3, 3, the gospel of John verse 3, 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly I tell you the truth, unless one is born again anew, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said you must be born again to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Well, what does that mean? By believing on Christ Jesus. By thinking, your change of thought, repentance, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, that he's God. By putting all your faith and trust onto him, you shall be saved. So that's what he wants from us, the Jew and Gentile. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. We can't save ourselves, but not of works that one shall boast. It is the gift of God. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 8, 6. One second, folks. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. Yet, to us, there is one God, the Father, out from whom are all things, and we are unto him and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all are all things, and we are through him. Let's look at John chapter 11, the Gospel of John. Verse 25 through 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, he even though he shall die, shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall by no means die forever. Do you believe this? And he's asking you today, do you believe that Christ Jesus is God? Is my son, the father, is saying? Now let's lastly look at the book of Acts. Verse chapter 16, verse 30 through 31. And leading them outside, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now get this. If you don't get anything else, get this. So they were asking Apostle Paul and the disciples, what do I do to be saved? I had asked years back, about seven, eight, what do I do to be saved? And I'm hoping you're asking, what do you do to be saved? And they said, and I'm saying to you, believe unto the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and you shall be saved, you and your household. Now, I want to wrap it up with that, with this message. 
if I can give you any message, it's this message. I'm proclaiming you, Jesus Christ, and that he is God, that he is the only way, truth, and life. That I ask you and plead with you that you will take upon this night, moment, to evaluate where your heart is, what your beliefs are, and to reconsider praying and asking God the Father, if Christ is who he is, please reveal that to you and to your heart. That everything else may be forsaken, that he may be believed on, and that you may have eternal life. That we all may come into an understanding and knowledge that we can't do anything to save ourselves, and that we are really helpless in this world. But the one that can help us is Christ Jesus of Nazareth. If you don't understand everything, it's okay. The Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, will come to teach you if you ask him to, to come live within you, the things of God, the things of Christ, the things of the gospel, the things of the Bible. He did it for me. Absolutely. Now, I'll tell you that you're not going to live a perfect life after that. After that. If you come to believe in Christ, your life is going to be harder. You're not going to understand why your friends leave you. Your friends and family, they may turn away and call you a Jesus freak or, or a, you know, that Bible thumper. But you'll come to know that you have eternal life in Christ Jesus. You'll have a peace that surpasses all understanding. And there's not one day that will go by where you will not, not know. You'll know absolutely for 100% where you'll be going. Despite you may get in an accident on the way to work. Or you might not wake up, despite of what all these things may happen. We might go into a world war, you know what I mean? Um, I don't want to say too much on this platform, but anything can happen to the country, to us. It's life. And I want to tell you, and I'm pleading with you, I want my friends and family to make it into heaven. Um, I personally believe there's going to be people there that you may not have thought would have made it. But this is your chance right now to believe in Jesus Christ, to, to have a fresh start, to have your sins forgiven, your mess ups forgiven, and to get a fresh clean slate with God. And if you want to be saved, uh, I, it's simply talking to God, that's prayer. Saying, I believe in Jesus Christ. Um, I want to know more. Heavenly Father, please show me the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, show me your existence more. Uh, please help me understand you. Help me understand if this is the way, the truth, and life, if you, everything that Brad said is absolutely correct, will you show me? Because I want to be saved. I want eternal life. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be condemned. Please give me eternal life too. I don't want to be deceived by the devil and his enemies and the demons. I want what God has given me, and that's the gift of salvation, to be saved. I want to be with my friends and family. If this is true, please show me in my own life. And I'm telling you, if you ask God that, he will show you. Now, I want to thank you for listening and watching. Please share this with your family and friends because if you feel uncomfortable sharing, send this video to them. Um, God bless you and thank you so much for your time. And again, keep uh, everybody in prayer. And uh, I love everybody. And um, reconciliation is very important as well. Look at past failures. And if there's none, if there hasn't been any forgiveness amongst any of us, we all need to come to a place of forgiveness, uh, putting it at the feet of Jesus and uh, regrouping, reconciling, because that's what God has done for us through Christ, reconciled humanity back to him. And he remembers our sins no more if we come to him, asking forgiveness. We shall remember the mistakes that somebody has done against us no more, and we should forgive them. And we shall love one another as Christ loved us and forgive. It's very important. Time is short. Thank you so much for your time and God bless you. And I'll see you on the next broadcast, my friends and my family. God bless you. In Jesus Christ's name and Nazareth, amen and amen.